Hi there, welcome back to Gift to Guitars. Today we are continuing our work on this Telecaster style New York guitar. You can see we've got the New York skyline here, Chrysler building headstock, and New York skyline on the back of the guitar as well. Today we are going to be putting all the electronic components in it, stringing it up and trying it out for the first time. But before we do any of that, we need to work on the fretboard of the guitar. This started off as a kit guitar and they're somewhat notorious for needing a little extra love in the fretboard area. This part of the guitar here is called the fretboard. These silver things that run across it are called frets. They need to be nice and smooth and feel really comfortable on your hands. Right now, uh, they're a little rough and they're really sharp right now. So if you tried to slide your hand across it really fast to play a song, if you're going from like a chord up here and you've got to get the solo down here, you could actually cut yourself. So what I'm going to do is level all of these off, make sure they're nice and rounded, and then also round off all of the edges. It takes a lot of time and effort, but, uh, but in the end it's totally worth it. It feels really good afterward. I have this little gauge here and it has uh, notches in it which should fit right over each of the frets and that lets me see if my neck is straight or if it has any sort of bend in it. This neck is looking pretty great. This is the best of all the kit guitars I've gotten so far is the most straight. This is kind of a fun part of the guitar build because I get to use very specific tools that are just for building guitars. Uh, you saw me use that straight edge a second ago. This is called a fret rocker. It has four different sides on it, a long side, a small side, and then two in between sizes. And the reason it has those different sizes is so I can place them on three frets at a time and see if there's any rocking on the frets. So what I'm doing is I'm placing it down, I'm seeing if there's any teeter-totter action. Those so far have been perfect. As you go further down the neck of the guitar, the frets get closer and closer together. And oh, here you can see a little bit of wiggling there. So this fret is just a little bit high. I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and mark that to let me know that I need to deal with it. But you'll see as I go through the fretboard, as I get to these smaller and smaller spaces, this one's a little high as well. As I get to these smaller and smaller spaces, I turn the fret rocker to the appropriate size. So I'm only touching three frets at a time. So I only found like three frets. This is actually one of the best necks I've ever gotten in one of these kits. And what I've got here is a special tool. I've never used this before. So, exciting moment for me. This is called a fret kisser. It's a new thing. I've never, I've never used one before, but it's just like the fret rocker. It's the same shape. But what it has is this little section here that I think has is like diamond crusted. <laughs> it's basically like a sanding surface. So I can actually sand the fret equal with all the other frets. So I find the one that fits on there and then I just go like this. And it filed down that fret equal with the other two. And this is my first time using this. I'm super impressed. What a great idea. I Before, I would have to sand everything all as a unit and it would bring all of the frets down and I'd have to recrown all the frets. This just made my life a billion times easier. Now the next thing is I have to re-round the frets because maybe if I draw you a picture it'll make more sense. String goes across here and what you can do is press down in between these frets and the string makes contact with one of these frets and makes the string shorter and that changes the tone of the string. So to give you an example, here's a close up of a neck of one of my guitars. If I pluck the string, it sounds like that. If I press on that string and have it make contact with this fret right here, it changes the note. Now here's the problem with what I just did. I'm gonna do a super close up. Here are some frets. And this is one of the frets that I shaved down, so it's it's flat. 
Now, typically, when you're playing the guitar, you want the string to just hit a one point on here, so like right there. The problem is, if you press a string against here, it's gonna touch all this area, all of this. It's gonna go across this whole thing, and that creates buzzing and, and not good sounds. So, what I need to do is this. This fret, I've sanded down so that it's equal with these but it's got this big flat area, which is no good for making a good sound. What I need to do now is sand this so that it has a nice rounded top, just like the other frets. And for that, I'm gonna be using a series of files, sandpaper, and polishing pads, and really get those rounded off and nice and shiny. While I'm at it, I'm gonna shine all the rest of the frets and round off all of the edges of the frets. It's a lot of work, but I've done it on every single guitar that I've worked on so far, and they've all felt great because of it, and this guitar should not be an exception. kind of hard to show on camera why I do all that extra work, but you can see that just oiling this has really brought out the color of the rosewood, and you can also see the shine that's on those frets. Uh, that means that they are glassy smooth and they're going to feel really great to play. There are no sharp edges anymore. It feels really good. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. All right, I think we're at the stage in the build where we can start putting the electronics in and seeing how it looks as a complete guitar. All right, I do wanna explain a couple of things going into this. First off, that big white thing is called the pick guard. It is an important part of a Telecaster because it holds one of the pickups in place. It has to be there. And when I was painting it, I planned for it to be there. You can see right here, the painting just sort of stops. Like the, the detail all kind of goes away in this part of the guitar so that this can cover it up. The reason I'm bringing that up is uh, when I built Colleen's guitar, I didn't plan for that necessarily. And once I put the pick guard on, I was like, oh, it's covering up most of my design work. The reason I put the moon and the Statue of Liberty where I put it, the reason I worked so hard on the headstock, the reason I put a skyline on the back of the guitar was because I knew this pick guard was going to be here. My solution for Colleen's guitar was to build a see-through pick guard that looked, um, looked like this one here. This is the one that I ordered for Colleen's guitar that didn't work on her guitar, and I actually placed it on here to sort of see what it would look like and I like it better with the white pick guard on it, to be completely honest. I think it adds an accent to the guitar, it brightens the guitar up a little bit, and the screw holes fit in the right places, which is, you know, kind of crucial. So I think I'm gonna go with the original pick guard on this, and I thought I'd go over some of the wiring stuff. It's a little more technical, but I haven't really gone into too much detail on the other guitars. So I'm going to go through how it works and why it's wired the way that it is, mainly because I have a better understanding of it now than I did when I was first wiring up guitars. And this is a very basic wiring job. So I can sort of go through and explain what's happening with the electrical current on this one. There are two pickups on this, and they act sort of as a microphone. They take the vibration of the string and turn it into an electrical current. And there are two wires going from each of these into this chamber here. This area here is basically like your little control center. So you have a volume potentiometer, that's what this thing is called, and a tone. And the tone, you can tell that it's the tone because it has this little resistor soldered on here. Most of this is pre-wired for me, and uh, the main things I have to do are connect these to the switch, which is this part here. It's a three-way switch. If I wire this all correctly, when I'm in this position here, this pickup will be the only thing bringing sound from the strings to my amplifier. If I'm way over at the other end, this one is the only one, so it kind of kills the, uh, the circuit going to here. 
And then in the middle, both of these will be going through and you'll get the sounds from both. Different points on the string sound different and these are both uh, built differently. So they have slightly different sounds to them. So musicians will switch back and forth or use both of these pickups to create different sounds with their guitar. That's a pretty cool feature that the electric guitar has that an acoustic guitar does not have. There is a wire that's this blue one here is going from here through a little channel in the guitar here to right here. And I think I need to solder it to these two points here. I need to figure that out in just a second here. Then we have this red wire. It's going from this pickup here and it's gonna go through here and get attached to another point on here so that when I switch this, it'll go from one wire to the other wire. There's another green wire that's right here. That's my ground wire. Basically, I'm creating a big circuit and all the metal parts need to be within the circuit, including the strings. So there's a circuit that's touching every single part of the guitar and it needs to go up through the strings. And the way we're gonna do that is by having this green wire go up through this hole right here and touch the back of this big metal plate. That's not supposed to be there. And then this metal plate is what holds the strings into place so the strings will be grounded. The last thing that I need to connect is this little guy here. This is the jack. And the jack is what connects the guitar to whatever's amplifying the guitar. You can see a guitar cable will hook in right here. So there are two little points here, a positive and a negative that I need to attach on there. And those are both gonna be coming off of this part of the guitar here, off the volume. And if I do all that correctly, hopefully we'll get some sound out of this. All right, I know you don't normally see me in these, but these are my reading glasses, and it's important to wear eye protection when you're soldering. It's also important to see when you're soldering. So I thought I'd wear them for this part of it. All right, it's time to test it out. I'm gonna plug it into an amp. It should be silent when I do that, and then I'm gonna touch metal to one of the pickups, and when that happens, it should create like a buzz or a pop and that, no that will let me know that the wiring is correct. And if it's not, I can tear it apart before I string it all up. So let's, uh, let's test it out. Nothing's screwed in. I, can, I have access to everything right now, so that's why it's dangling off the side here. Okay, it sounds pretty clear right now. The switch is in this position, so that means this pickup should make noise, and it's not. Is this one? Ooh. Hmm, not hearing anything. All right, so clearly I wired it wrong somewhere. And I think that the, the area that I messed up is the switch, the actual switch of the guitar. This is a multimeter and I was using it to figure out which direction the switch would go, which like pickup it would pick up basically. And I didn't follow the instructions. I followed what made the most sense in my head. And, uh, and now I'm gonna go back and, and look at some pictures of Telecaster switches and, and actually see how this is supposed to be wired. I think I got it figured out. I'm gonna try and rewire it. And I kind of vaguely remember this wiring diagram from working on Colleen's guitar. That was a long time ago. So it makes sense now in my head, but it's, it's basically starting over this part of the project. So what I'm gonna be doing is this. I have to connect this connection and this connection with this wire. And then I have to connect this connection and this connection with this wire. And I'm gonna connect these other two wires that are coming off of the red and the blue 
to the back of this. This is grounded onto the pot, so if I ground it onto here, it'll all work itself out, and hopefully that'll make the guitar run. All right, let's try it out again. That's not good. Okay, so that usually means that one of my ground wires is switched around. Both of the pickups are working, but I'm just having a horrible buzzing sound. This has happened to me once before. You might remember how frustrating it was. And there's a couple things I could try. The one thing that I'm almost certain it is, I'm gonna try first. And that is that I have reversed somehow my ground wire with my uh, input jack wire and if I switch those hopefully that takes care of it if it doesn't then we're gonna have a whole guessing game throughout the whole guitar <laughs> trying to figure out why it's making that sound because it's not supposed to make that buzzing sound a little buzzing's okay because it's a single coil pickup and there is a little buzz associated with it anyway first step is to unsolder this thing switch the wires and resolder it All right, this has been a, uh, a very confusing puzzle, but I think I figured it out. Basically, I think there was a few things going on. The soldering that I had done on the jack itself and on the switch, I don't think was very good. Like it wasn't a really solid connection. So what I did is I cleaned those completely up and re-soldered them really nicely. So now that reduced a bunch of the buzzing and there was a, an additional wire that was a part of the original kit that I was seeing people online snipping off. Basically, we have this little wire here that was connected to here. And uh, when I removed it, it stopped buzzing. And I think what it was doing was interfering with this wire, which absolutely needs to be here. And, um, and this is just an extra ground. I'm gonna try and solder it back on, but if the buzzing gets worse, I'm actually just gonna snip this wire right off of here and not even use it. But for right now, um, the buzzing is very minimal, and I think it's just regular electronic interference. Fingers crossed, this is the last thing I'll have to do here. All right, we got all the electronics in. I think this is looking really cool. I really like it with all the hardware on it. That looks like a guitar to me. All right, uh, we gotta put the tuning pegs on up here and then put all the strings on. I got about halfway through putting these in and I realized that I haven't oiled the neck yet and it's gonna be hard to get in between these. So I'm gonna take the ones out that I put in, oil the neck, and then put them all in. For this, I'm gonna be using teak oil. I think it's mainly used for furniture, for oiling furniture, but I'm gonna use it on the guitar neck. I used this on Colleen's guitar and it looked really cool. So hopefully we get the same results today. That is much better. Uh, ooh, feels nice. Feels really smooth, but not like squeaky smooth. Uh, a lot of guitars have lacquer on the back, and with a lacquer, it looks really nice, but it, you, your hand can get stuck as you try and slide it on the neck, but an oiled neck like this one allows you to go across the neck no problem. That combined with the oiled 
fretboard and the nice rounded frets here make this guitar feel very, very nice to play. So I'm gonna actually sign the back of the headstock of this and then put the tuning pegs in and uh, and we'll string her up. All right, we have a guitar that has strings on it. This is an exciting moment. Um, I can't play it yet and I'll explain why. There are a bunch of different areas on an electric guitar that you can adjust. When you do that, it's called a setup and this guitar is not set up yet. And one of the big issues that I'm seeing just straight away is that this pickup right here, the strings are on it. So they won't make noise because they're just on that pickup. Luckily, that's one of the easiest things that there is to set up on a guitar. All I have to do is turn these two screws here and it will raise or lower the pickup. In this case, lower the pickup. I don't want them touching the strings. This one, I think, is a little too far down. It needs to come up and there's three screws here for that. So I'm just gonna go through and, and get it kind of set up where I want it and then tune up the strings and play around with this and see uh, what else needs to be done with this guitar. Watch this pickup right here as I turn these screws. So this area here is called the bridge and the strings lay across the bridge and it's sort of the cutoff point for the string going up to the rest of the guitar. And they have all these little adjustment points here where you can raise or lower the string and as you can see right now they're kind of in a weird jagged angle like this string here is up higher than this string here this string is a little higher and then this one's way higher than all of them so what i need to do is make sure that the strings are lined up parallel with the fretboard you can see that there's a curve to this. This isn't just straight across. There's a little curve going through here. And I have all these little guides that I can put under the strings to check and see what that curvature is. Now I've already checked this with a few of them and I know that this one's a 12. But when I lay this on top of the strings, some of the strings are touching it, some of them are hanging below it. What I want to do is make all the strings equal by making adjustments back here at the bridge. These guitars come with notoriously cheap strings, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and take all the strings that I put on it, take them off, and put new strings on it. That way, I'll actually be able to tune them without them breaking. Okay, the last thing I wanna check before I sit down and actually try this guitar out is the intonation of the strings. Right now, when I'm not pressing down on any of the frets, it is in tune. But if the guitar isn't intonated properly, by that I mean the length of the string isn't set up exactly right, then when I get down here to these higher frets, the note that I think I'm playing isn't gonna actually play, it'll be slightly off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the string open, and then I'm gonna play it at the 12th fret, which should be the octave of the open string. And if they're both the same note, then I know that it's intonated properly. If it's not, then I'm gonna access this little screw here and pull that piece of the bridge back or forward 
uh, depending on what I need to do to get the right sound. So I'm actually gonna do this right here for you so that you can see it. This is my tuner, and I'm gonna play the first string open, make sure that it's in tune. Okay, so that's an E. When I press right here at the 12th fret, it should also be an E in tune. And it seems like we're slightly off here. So by turning this screw here, I'm actually moving this little piece of the bridge forward. And we'll see if that helped us at all. I have to retune it sometimes. Yeah, there we go, retuned. That made it worse, so I actually need to pull it back. That is a very painstaking process, but I think I've got it pretty well intonated. The strings are on it, they're good strings. I think it's time to plug it in. All right, here we go. Got a guitar here. We've got the Statue of Liberty with the moon, Skyline. Skyline continues on the back with sort of a Milky Way going on back there. And then on the reverse side, headstock, we have our Chrysler building design signed on the back. This, hopefully, is a finished guitar, if it sounds right. I'm still learning how to use a looper pedal, but that, that was kind of a fun little jam. Uh, this, uh, this, this guitar plays great. I feel like it looks really classy. I really, it, like, there is some thickness and some texture difference on the paint, which is not typical on a guitar, but since I was doing that spray paint art technique, I wasn't going for your standard guitar. This is like, this is an art piece. So it has a little bit of a different texture to it, but I, I like it. I think it looks good. And, uh, and I think it feels good. Yeah, a couple things I wish I had done differently. Uh, the headstock up here actually has some cracking in the guitar lacquer. I don't know if that's, that's a problem I've been having a lot lately with guitars. I don't know why. I think it might be the type of spray paint that I'm using or how long I let it cure before it, uh, before I, I lacquer it. I don't know. Uh, but there is, it could also be the weather. There's like a ton of different reasons that there would be something uh, that's called checking. You can kind of see it here, I'll show you. I don't know if you can see it in the extreme close up there, but there there are a few cracks that are kind of going through the finish. And um, you know, that's just one of those things that happens. Things that I love about this guitar, I love the headstock. I think it is my favorite headstock that I've done. And um, I, I think I'm gonna be doing more intricate carving on future guitars because how cool is that? Alright, so that is the New York guitar. This whole guitar process has been a part of creating awareness and uh, collecting funds for certain charity organizations, all of which I will link down in the description box below. If you want to go check those out, please do. That being said, I have been toiling over what to do with this guitar now that it is complete. I don't know what to do with it. So I'm gonna ask you in the comment section, what do you think I should do? Do you think that we should do some sort of 
uh, thing where people give to charity and I pick a name out of the people that are giving to charity and I give it as a gift to one person? Do I give it to an organization for them to auction it off? Do I... Um, I would like it to have something to do with New York, and I do know some people that live in New York that are in the Broadway community. Should I reach out to them and see if they have a good idea of something to do with it? Let me know in the comment section down below. I, I would love to hear your thoughts on this because I'm, I'm really not sure. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this particular guitar. I have ideas for future ones, but this particular guitar, it's gifted guitars. I have to gift it to somebody and I'm not sure who to gift it to. So please tell me in the comment section and in a future video, I will tell you what my decision was with this guitar and explain its story. For those of you who have followed along through this whole journey, I wanna thank you so much. This has been such a fun guitar to build. It's really been a great way for me to uh, give back and to be sort of retrospective and work things out in my own head. It's been very therapeutic working on this guitar, especially with carving the headstock I had a bunch of time to really reflect on the times that I've visited New York and what a special place it is and um, how much the people there are hurting right now and and, uh, and I'm happy that things are starting to get better and I hope that they continue that trend and I hope that the funds that have been collected from this project uh, do some good. If you're watching this video, hopefully you're subscribed, but if you're not, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. It's free, it's easy, and if you turn on the notifications, it will notify you whenever I post one of these videos. I usually post every Friday, and I'm always working on some new and interesting guitar, which includes next week, which will be the beginning of the Bob Ross guitar. So be sure to tune in for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun, probably a little silly, a little just happy. Maybe some accidents will happen. You know, it's Bob Ross. How can you go wrong? And once again, I want to say thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.